What's up, Pride Band? What's going on, guys? As always, Brendan Teets, owner and co-chair of Prime Strength. Today's gonna be a really fun video. We're gonna take a brutally honest look at my lifting skills and put myself under a spotlight to break down really how I would go about coaching myself and what I need to be doing better as a lifter. After this meet I just competed in where I totaled 800 kilos in the 220 pound weight class at a body weight of 216 is what I weighed in at. We're gonna compare myself in a few ways. First off, we're gonna take a look at my technique on each lift, see where my sticking points are and what I could be doing better to fix them and just become an overall more technical lifter. And then we're also gonna take a look at some of the athletes in the Open Powerlifting 220 class and compare my squat, bench, and deadlift to some averaged out squat, bench, and deadlift numbers to see kind of where I rank up with people in my weight class as far as a strength standard goes to get an idea of which lifts are lagging behind and which lifts are doing well. That way I know what I need to improve on. Now at the end of the video too, we're gonna have a free blog on our website for you to go check out and read a little bit more about how you can dissect your own lifting and what exercises and different programming tactics you can implement implement into your training right now to improve your lifting. So if you wanna go read that blog, watch this video first and then go check out the link in the description box or down in the pinned comments below and you can go read that blog and then also sign up for our newsletter which will always give you access to whenever we put out a new blog. So at this last meet, I totaled 800 kilos in the 220 pound weight class. Now normally I compete in the USPA, so what I'm gonna do is go on open powerlifting and take the top 10 both high and low closest averages to the 800 kilo mark in the 220 pound weight class in the USPA because that's usually the federation I compete in. And we're gonna compare the squats averaged out to my squat that I made, the bench averaged out to my bench, and then the deadlift. So we're basically gonna add up all 10 of those squats and then divide it by the average to get the average sum. And then we're gonna compare that to each of my lifts to kind of get an idea of where I'm lagging. So there's good news and bad news. The good news is my lifts are doing pretty well on par. Currently, there's no big surprises here. The average 10 closest totals to the 800 kilo class are all squatting on average about 285 kilos. That is just two and a half kilos less than what I actually hit in my meat. So my meat, I hit 287 and a half kilos, which is 633 pounds. And that means my squat is right on par or even slightly above what the average is for around my total in my weight class. Now, no surprises here. The bench press though is a little bit under. So it's about seven and a half kilos less than the average of the 220 guys in the USBA. Their average bench press is coming out to 195 kilos. My uh, last meet I just did 187 and a half kilos, which is 413 pounds. Wasn't my best bench day. I was actually expecting a lot more, but nonetheless, the only thing that matters is what happens in competition. A lot of those guys with their numbers averaged out probably didn't have the best days in competition either. So this is why this is the most legitimate way to kind of compare you to other people is because it's a sanctioned total, not something they did in the gym under the scrutiny of judges. And it really gives you an idea of what you need to work on. So there's really no excuses for me to say, oh, I didn't have the best bench day. I definitely need to be bringing up my bench press here. And then finally, you know, lo and behold, this is kind of obvious. My deadlift, even on a bad day, is two and a half kilos over their average. So 322 and a half kilos is the average deadlift strength in uh, my weight class nearest my total. And then I pulled 325 kilos, which is 716 pounds for all the Americans out there who don't wanna do the kilo math. Now, what we wanna do a little bit further here, the reason why I said this is good news and bad news is I'm pretty on par with most of these numbers and even slightly above the bench I need to work on. But when we take a look at my next goal total, so I am competing on February 6th of 2021, and I'm going to try to total 825 kilos. So what I did is actually took all the averages of their squat, bench, and deads with all the lifters closest to an 825 kilo total in the 220 pound weight class. And what we see is kind of a big jump in numbers, not in the way that I want them to be. So their average squat is 300 kilos out of those 10 closest lifters on that total mark. So 300 kilo squats is 660 pound squat. So that means I probably need to add close to about 30 pounds of my squat. But I think this is more than doable given the fact that I had to sink my squat so deep, unnecessarily deep if you ask my opinion. Uh, in this last competition, that's usually not the case at most comps. So I think this one's pretty doable, but a 300 kilo squat's a pretty big squat. And I'm also going against guys who usually weigh in around 230 to 240 in the off season and just cut water weight down to the 220 weight class. I am unfortunately uh, light 220. I weighed in at 216 at this meet, um, but it's no excuses. Now the bench press also shoots up here at 202 and a half kilos 
uh, for the average bench press. That is way above mine. That's just over, that, I think that's 446 pounds for all the Americans. Obviously, I'm nowhere near 446 pound bench press, so my bench press needs to be a huge focus in this off season. And then lastly, funny enough, my deadlift actually matches their deadlift average. So most of the guys here are pulling about 325 kilos on average. That's exactly what I pulled this last week. So it's not necessarily that I need to fix my squat and bench to match them. I happen to be a deadlift specialist. That's why my deadlift can hang with people totaling you know, 25 kilos over what I'm totaling in competition. But the goal here is to really focus on trying to bring up my weak points. So I do wanna focus more on my squat and bench, but more than likely what's gonna happen is my deadlift's always gonna be a little bit higher than the sum average of people in my weight class totaling what I'm totaling. And my bench and squat might be a little bit lower, but I do think this paints the picture that hey, focus on your squat and bench, really get those up. Now let's dissect each lift of mine with a video analysis and kind of break down what's happening here. The first one is gonna be the squat. Overall, this is probably my best lift. From a technique standpoint, I've just worked extremely hard on my squat, I'm really proud of it, but there are still a couple issues. My main issue is during uh, high levels of fatigue, I tend to kind of flex over my mid upper back. I, I kind of lose my rack positioning. You guys saw me get smashed by that 640 pound squat. That was mostly thoracic strength. To remedy this, what I often do in competitions is actually purposely overextend my spine just a little bit while I'm squatting, because that funny enough helps fix the problem. The issue there though is I get really beat up when I do that. In fact, that's probably why my adductor and QL strain so bad under heavy load, because it's probably not the safest thing to overextend your, your spine in a heavy squat, and it causes a lot of issues in the hips and knees. But nonetheless, this is something I probably need to work on the most. I really need to be able to squat with a neutral back position without that back position given. Now the fix here is pretty simple. I really just gotta keep working on high bar squats and a lot of front squats, but probably in a slightly different way than I have. Now you might be saying, how will those fix your back strength issues? A lot of people don't understand the physics and biomechanics related to high bar and front squats, but both of these movements, especially on my anatomy, place an extraneous moment arm onto the T-spine extensors, meaning that mid upper back extensors that keep you upright in your squat. The high bar squat is gonna increase demand there more than any other joints when comparing it to the low bar squat. And then the front squat does that like twofold. So I'm gonna incorporate both of these into my off season programming. However, I think the one thing that'll really help me out are paused high bar squats that are rather heavy. So that's probably something I'll throw in towards the end of my training cycle. I've actually had success with that in the past when my squat felt really, really strong during training cycles. So it's something I wanna add back in because it places a huge demand on your torso to stay really rigid coming out of that hole with a really heavy high, high bar pause squat. I'm talking in anywhere from that one to five rep range. So not a ton of volume, but of course, because we're transitioning to the off season, currently my program, I'm gonna have really high rep, high volume front squats, followed by another day of high rep, high volume pause high bar squats, so a ton, a ton of high bar and front squat volume. And then of course, I'll be incorporating the low bar squat on my main heavy day to just keep that in groove. Now moving on to the bench press, this lift will always be my crib tonight. I got really long arms, I'm more built for the deadlift than I am the bench press. However, I'm pretty good from a technical standpoint on this lift as well. Really all three lifts I'm pretty good from a technique standpoint, but I can always be doing better. The first thing this meet showed me is that I have become uncomfortable with longer pauses. In the past, this was never a problem for me. I used to do a lot of long pause work. However, I haven't been doing much of that the last few training cycles and getting an audible pause command from a judge on the platform kind of threw me off. I really felt like I was holding it there forever. Even though the video wasn't extremely long of a pause, it definitely felt like it when I was under that weight. So I'm gonna be incorporating a lot of long pause bench pressing, especially on my main primary day under heavy loads. I'm gonna pause the hell out of my reps, a little bit more exaggerated, even in volume blocks as I get used to it. The second thing that comes to mind is obviously my lockout strength. This tends to be a problem for any long arm bencher. I just need to get stronger in the lockout as much as possible. So I'll be incorporating some floor presses. I'll also be working on other things like close grip work and just overall close grip Larson pressing really because I feel like that's going to have the most carryover. And then lastly, like I said in the last few videos, incline bench and OHP really train that lockout strength, getting that serratus interior and that uh, protraction of the scapula really engaged in the lift. Sometimes as a lanky arm bencher, you actually have to do a push out bench on your max singles where you actually allow the scapula to 
to protract. It's a really good tricky way to finish strong on a lockout. When you're a little bit more stubby and more of a max grip with kind of max arch venture, you definitely don't want to be doing that. But some of my lanky guys, we have success with this. And so the incline bench and the OHP really train that scapular protraction slash upward rotation that we kind of need to do this motion. So I'll be incorporating a ton of close grip Larson pressing, long pause benching, incline benching, heavy touch and go style with a 30 degree incline. So it's pretty close to flat and then overhead press to really remedy all these problems. Now my deadlift, probably my best lift, but also probably the lift I need the most help from a mental standpoint on. So we're gonna talk about that too. Now, obviously I stick right at right at and right above my knees. We've seen this in two different meets. I'll show both of the videos on the screen at the same time. I could hold that thing there for six, seven seconds long, try to grind it through. I just can't get my glutes through. So I think one, this is just my natural sticking point. I get a ton of leverage off the floor with my slack pull style that I use. If you've watched my videos, you know I do more than a slack pull. It's really what I call a leverage slack pull. So I almost cheat the floor of the deadlift to get a lot of speed, but this kind of makes my lockout suffer. And it's also just my natural anatomy causing me to stick there. But nonetheless, I think there's a few things we can do to remedy this. Now, the first thing is gonna be back rigidity. The more I can keep my position off the floor in check, the more I'm going to be able to drive my glutes through the lift. If my back flexes over and my hips posteriorly tilt, it's very hard for my glutes to contract through in that mid to lockout portion of the lift. So back rigidity is huge. That's why I'm going to incorporate a lot of pause deadlifts and even long pause deadlifts on my main primary day. This is going to give me a lot of focus on staying tight just as I'm breaking the floor of the deadlift. And it also just puts a lot of tension and demand in the low back extensors to make sure they stay rigid, strong, and trained. Now, the next thing is from a technical standpoint, I just need to think about actually locking out. This sounds funny because my lockout looks really clean on lighter weights, but I tend to just think about breaking the floor and then I kind of grind through the sticking point and almost just lean back. I really need to purposefully drive my glutes to the bar. Sometimes I use a little too much leverage in my deadlift. So driving the glutes to the bar, especially on a deadlift bar, which has a lot of oscillation and whip to it mid lift, that's going to really help me punch those hips through. And then lastly, I may even incorporate some top end range work. I rarely do this with lifters, but with myself, we may see me actually do some chain deadlifts. Bryce Lewis and a few other lifters like Calgary Barbell, you know, Bryce Koscheck, I believe that's how you say his name. Um, they've messed around with this, but I think they do it more for fun. Usually in raw powerlifting, you don't see this. And I'm not really advising for many people to do this, but I think in my parts of my lifting career, I have the technique rather mastered. Now I need to fine tune some of the small details and just having chain on that bar will remind me to really thrust my glutes through. As where a beginner probably should just focus on their overall mechanics of back rigidity, core bracing, and just leg drive and glute mindfulness and everything else at once in the deadlift. But I can fine tune stuff a little bit more and this might be just a little reminder for me to do it. Now real quickly, I also, before we get out of here, wanna break down what I can be doing from a mental standpoint better because it's not as simple as just pro programming tactics for the squat. I really got to not rely on bad habits in the off season. Sometimes I reinforce that overextension of my squat too much. I let it get carried away. One, this fatigues my back a lot, but two, it really just stops me long-term from fixing the problem I have with just staying tighter in the squat. I shouldn't be altering my technique to move heavier loads in a sub-optimal uh, way. Instead, I want to move heavier loads with a very neutral spine, proper bracing, proper technique, and just bring up those weak points from a strength standpoint. So I really got to check my mindset with my squat especially on the heavy day in the off season where I'm doing my low bar work, even though it's volume work right now, I really wanna to try to work on keeping my ribs retracted and down abs on, huge breath in, and don't overextend. It's not as simple as just say, hey, implement this exercise. You gotta check the mindset and your technique awareness as well. Now, benching's really simple. I overshoot like a motherfucker, especially on variations like incline bench or close grip Larson. They're really fun to me. And then I also just get kind of lazy on my main bench day. I almost always bench after I squat, sometimes even after I squat and deadlift. I usually do my SPD days a little bit out of order. This is a problem. I tend to just put my bench from a mental standpoint kind of in the back burner and I just approach it lazy. It's it's not even that I approach the top sets lazy. It's like my warm-ups. I'll just rush through the warm-ups. Won't take time getting my movement down. I just overall don't respect the bench press almost. With the squat and deadlift, they're so damn heavy and they're loading your spine in such a way, you kind of have to respect it. The bench press you can get away with kind of being an idiot about, and that's what I do in the off season, so I need to switch that up, and I also just need to stop overshooting and be true to the process. 
Now deadlifts, it's like total opposite. I undershoot them. I usually over rely on my confidence in the deadlift. I tend to hit a top set and then it'll be undershot. And I'm like, oh, that's good for the day. Let's pack it up there because it's like 660 pounds for reps or something. It just naturally comes easy to me. Because it comes easy, it's not really a progressive challenge from a mental standpoint. But again, this is kind of laziness. I should always be trying to better all three lifts to the best of my ability, unless we're in some kind of specialization phase where I'm just totally allowing my deadlift to detrain actually kind of like I did last season, but this season, I really want a 750 pound deadlift. If we're gonna hit that 825 kilo goal total of mine in February, my deadlift's gotta show the fuck up because that will make up so much of my total, especially if I get all three lifts, which I haven't done the last two meets, so I gotta make it happen. Deadlift's gotta show up, I can't be undershooting, I can't throw it on the back burner, and I gotta approach it with some vigor, just like I do with my squats. Now, just to give you guys some resources before we end this video to kind of analyze your own lifting and see what you could be improving on, first thing I want you to do is go to openpowerlifting.com, check out your weight class in the federation you compete in and find the 10 closest totals to your last total in your last competition and compare their average squat strength, their average bench strength, and their average deadlift strength against your squat, bench, and deadlift. See where you rank up from a strength standard point and then do the same thing with a goal total that is realistic that you think you could possibly hit in your next meet and average out your comparison there. That way you can see what lifts need to grow to what level to kind of give you an idea of what those top lifters are doing in that weight class, in that strength zone. After that, go check out the blog on our website. I'm gonna give you a critical breakdown of different sticking points and exercises you could be applying to your sticking points once you analyze your uh, lifting from a, a visual standpoint. So I want you to go film your lifts from a side and front view, squat, bench, and deadlift, and then go read the blog and read what you could be implementing into your programming to get better results. Check it out, subscribe to our newsletter. Give me a, a comment down below. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. It's kind of a different style, but I had a lot of fun kind of writing this up. Give it a comment, give it a like, do all those things, and until next time, we'll see you guys later.